Last month was our most profitable cash flow month over the past 12 months. The cash flow we generated was absolutely awesome. In this video, I'm going to share with you exactly how much cash flow we pocketed by selling options last month in January. I'm also going to share with you the details of two trades that we did last month that I think you'll be able to learn something from. One of them is some naked call options that we've been selling in the S&P 500. The other was a cash secured put position that we sold in a company that ever since we first started selling options in it five and a half months ago, the price has just been steadily dropping. I'm going to show you how we adjusted it every month and how much profit and loss we ended up with in this overall position when we closed it out just a few days ago. These two trades will help you see how you can maneuver position when they go against you, but also how you can sell options to generate awesome cash flow and return every month in your account. Here you see every ops trade we did last month in January. The red boxes are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. And I encourage you to stay tuned in until the very end of this video where I will show you exactly how much cash flow we put into our pocket by selling options as well as the return that we received on that capital and on the margin requirement. Now we put a ton of cash into our pocket last month from selling options. However, just like scars, the trades that go our way, well, they aren't really that fun to talk about. I know that because you told me so in a poll that you took several months ago. So I'm going to show you one of our scars. I'm going to tell you the story behind it so that hopefully you can learn from it and it'll help you be a more successful and profitable option trader. The first trade I want to share with you is in a position that we've been in since August of last year or about five and a half months ago. Corning, ticker symbol GLW, is an electronics component technology and innovation company. It has a long track record of being profitable. As such, on August 13th, with Corning coming down and approaching the red 200 moving average, where the white arrow is, and with volume decreasing, as you can see at the purple arrow, I felt like the selling pressure in Corning was starting to subside. I believe that it would most likely find support at this red 200 moving average here on the daily chart. Because of that, we sold the third Friday of September $40 put option and got paid $1.11 per share. We were lined up to get a really nice return over the next month if this worked out for us. Now you see the daily chart up until a few days ago. As you can see, over the past five and a half months, Corning has pretty much been in a downtrend on this chart. For about two and a half weeks after we did this trade, Corning performed pretty much exactly like we expected it to, was finding support at this red 200 moving average. However, on September 1st, Corning broke below the red 200 moving average and has been below it ever since. I mean, this thing was like an Old West gunfight. Every time we turned around, it was shooting at us. It just kept dropping and dropping. So the first tip I want to share with you is that it's very important when a position goes against you that anytime you have the opportunity to improve your position, it's important to take advantage of that opportunity. Here you see us take advantage of every opportunity given to us. In fact, we took advantage of those opportunities every single month since we entered this position. As you can see at the red arrows, every single month we roll the strike price down by a dollar. Now a dollar may not sound like much until you calculate that all in, we rolled our strike price down from $40 to $36. That's 10% that we've been able to roll our strike price down over the past five and a half months. So what kind of return we're able to generate on a position that consistently went against us since we entered it? In all, we're in this position for five and a half months. We ended up putting a net of $1,592 into our pocket. At the end, we had $28,800 at risk. If we annualize that return, it equates to just over a 12% annualized return on capital. Not bad for a position that went against us almost the entire time. Now you see the chart up until the day that we exited this position. On January 26, when Corning announced earnings, it beat earnings by a few cents and it jumped up in price. I waited a few days until most of the value of that option was gone and the cash secured put that we had sold and I closed the position out. I was happy to get out of it and even happier once I ran the return and saw that we were able to get a decent return on a position that nagged us for five and a half months. When you have a position going against you, if it doesn't look like it's going to turn back into your favor, don't hope and pray that it will get better better. Do something about it. Make it better and improve the odds of you winning that position long term. Now you're probably going to be watching this video several weeks after I film it. But I want to talk to you about the naked call options that I've been selling in the S&P 500 because over the past month the market's been down a good bit. It has been recovering some over the past week but a lot of traders have positions that have gone against them in a big way. So I wanted to share a position with you that we've been in over the past several months that's been generating nice cash flow for us that actually does even better when the market goes down. You see, our portfolio is mainly bullish in nature, but I like to have some positions that will benefit from when the market does go down. Because of that, back at the end of September, I began selling naked call options in the S&P 500. 
I did this by selling two out of the money call options in SPX. If you're not familiar with SPX, as you can see here, it's basically 10 times SPY. Here you see all the trades I've done in SPX since we started selling naked call options in it back on September 28th. As you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I predominantly like selling options. If I buy options, it's almost always leap options. However, over my years of trading, I've noticed that quite often, January tends to be a volatile month. And as we all experienced, this January did indeed turn into a volatile month. Now, I had been selling naked call options in SPX. However, in December, because I know that Januarys can be volatile, I went even farther. And I took some of that cash and actually bought an out-of-the-money put option that would help our account if the market had a big crash. Here you see that on December 23rd, I bought the January 31st $4,000 put option. I just wanted to have the opportunity to make some nice profit if the market did crash really hard. Well, the market did have a good drawdown, although it never really got close to our $4,000 strike price. At the left side of the arrow, the base of the arrow, that's when I bought this put option. At the point of the arrow on January 10th, that's when I sold this put option. The time decay was eating away at the put option's value really fast. So even though SPX had declined in value, it didn't do it sharp or fast enough for me to believe that our $4,000 put option would go in the money. Because of that, I sold that put option for a small loss. But in all, by selling the January 31st $5,000 naked call options, we were able to pocket some really nice cash and buy ourselves $400,000 worth of insurance with that $4,000 strike put option. As you can see here on January 13th, with the January 31st $5,000 call options only worth 57 cents, we bought them back to close them out and simultaneously sold the February 28th same $5,000 strike price call option for $4.82 per share. Since we did two contracts, we pocketed right at $850 those naked call options. As you can see today, it's February 2nd, and I actually closed out the February 28th $5,000 call options and have now sold the March 31st naked call options. We'll see how this trade turns out. If you decide to sell some naked call options, you really want to make sure that you understand what you're doing. Naked call options, in theory, have unlimited risk potential. The reason is that a stock can theoretically go up to infinity. We are running some well thought out projections on how far we think the S&P 500 will get over the next month or two before we sell these naked call options. We're then selling these naked call options a little bit higher than where we believe is the potential that the S&P 500 could reach over that time period. As a result of selling naked call options in SPX since September, we've been able to pocket over $5,000 over the past four months. I like selling these calls because it gives us a way of making some cash by selling options that will benefit us if the overall market goes down. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And while you're there, if becoming a more consistently profitable option trader is important to you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. Now let me show you exactly how much cash we pocketed last month by selling put, covered call, and poor man's covered call options. At the bottom of the sheet in the blue box, you see that as a result of selling options, we put $21,669 cash into our pocket. In the orange box, you see that trading commission cost us $128.92. At the bottom left in the purple box, you see that market data cost us $32.75. At the bottom right in the green box, you see that we collected just over $625 in dividends from four covered call positions that we are in. In all, as a result of buying and selling options, as well as collecting some dividends, we put a net of $22,132.68 into our pocket. If you annualize that return on the approximately $1 million capital that we had at risk, it equates to right at a 26% annualized non-leverage return on capital. If you're curious about what the return on the $176,663 margin requirement was, if you didn't add in the margin for the short calls that we sold in the SP 500, it equates to a 148% annualized return on margin. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trades similar to the ones I spoke about in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more tips and tricks on how we fix option positions that have gone against us, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Option Repair Strategies. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.